all of them very happy. Something actually interesting happened in the court. They all go to the cemetery together. They dig up the corpse. Anthony makes the sign of the cross on the corpse. And he asks, did this man kill you? And the, the resurrected corpse, the assassin, he puts his hand like an oath. And he says, no, this is not my killer. When he was praying in church, still a young man, some kind of demon appeared in front of his inner eye or outer eye, and he did the sign of the cross. And the demon disappeared, and the sign of the cross is still there today on the marble. It stayed ingrained. And this was very... He was alone. It was very important for Anthony. It was very strengthening for his own faith. Now he was preaching and uh, in the 12th and 13th century Christianity was not doing so well. There were all sorts of sects, manchai and all sorts of uh, witches and a lot of inner wars and inner battles between Christians. A lot of people had lost their faith. They doubted, you see, because the preacher would say one thing and live another. This is why Franciscans were so popular, because they were poor. The poor people had enough of listening to rich priests. Everybody were poor but the priest. That, that would really piss them off. They could not relate to that. You tell us to be humble and you are the most proud. You tell us to be kind and you are the most stingy. You tell us to love each other and you don't love us. So. The power of Christianity, because people are not stupid, it was decreasing. And then in Antony, they saw the example. Sleeping on the floor, coming from a rich family, becoming poor like the people, so that the people's heart would be open. Because he didn't come to live a comfortable, powerful, to be a man of power and of, of money. No, he came to touch people's heart, to do something of real meaning. And as such, there was a lot of resistance. All these groups of non-Christians, all sorts of groups, there were also darker groups and groups which were doing all sorts of darker practices, they really hated him because he was taking the people back to Christianity. So they invited him to eat and they said, uh, uh, come and sit and eat with us. And he looks and he says, but the food is poisoned. And so they quote from uh, Mark, I think, that you would be able to eat poison if you are the follower of Christ, if you are a preacher in the name of Christ, you will be able to eat poison and the poison will not harm you. As it happened, for example, when the snake bit uh, Paul in his journey. And then the People there thought he was some kind of god because the poison did not influence him. And they said, look, if you eat the poison, we follow you. We become Christians. And Anthony, having this heart of a converter and worrying about the souls of these people that hate him and want to kill him, having a proper Christian love for his enemies, made the sign of the cross over the food and ate quietly, comfortably, enjoying the food over there. Nothing happened to him, and they were converted. Another person came to him and says, uh, Saint, Saint, please, I've done so many sins, and now I turn back to live a life of virtue, but these sins, they follow me. And Anthony says, okay, okay. You make a list of your sins, write them down on a paper or whatever they had then, and bring them to me. So the man brought the list, and then he started to confess, I've done so and so and so and so. And Anthony said, you are forgiven. And then from the paper, the sins would be erased. The ink would be erased. Try to imagine the moment for that person. Try to imagine, make such a list. I can make a really proper list myself. I've done a lot of bad things in this life and see the impact, the lightness of the heart in such moments where the ink disappears and you know that the burden, 
the punishment, the ignorance that you have created through the sin, it's gone. In his journey to preach, he went to a city, Remini, and he went there and started preaching to the people, and they are like, oh my God, another one of those that tells me that I live a life of sin, that I should repent. I think I'm going to go to a prostitute. It's much better than listening to this guy. Let's go and eat something. Nobody would listen to him. And he tried and with all his zeal. And nobody would listen to him. They had their material life and they were absolutely not interested. So Anthony, as, uh, as you can see in the picture there, Anthony went to the sea. And he said, he made the sign of the cross and he says, Dear fish, the people here, they don't want to hear me. So I'll speak to you. I don't want to waste my time when I'm here. Come to me, fish. And then the fish were arranged in a few lines. The small fish in front and bigger and bigger in the back. And they all stuck out their head. There is numerous historical references for this moment. So many people saw it. So all the fish are arranged there with their head up and he starts explaining them about the flood and how blessed they are. That during the flood all the other creatures were destroyed but they were fine for them the flood or no flood is basically the same and how God loves the fish and how Jesus multiplied the fish and how blessed they are. And when he finished all the fish were praising God in their way. They moved in a certain way when he finished speaking. Now, one person saw it and then he called the other and then the whole city was looking at that crazy preacher speaking to the fish and the fish listening. And then they said, oh, maybe you speak to us also. So he spoke and converted many. In the time of the prayer, Frogs were very loud. So he says, frogs, it is time for praying now. Please be quiet. And all the frogs became quiet. <laughs> Similar to Francis's miracle when he silenced the birds in, in one of the cities. Maybe we, we take a moment for that. So Francis came to a city that's name I can't remember. And he came to preach in the town square. He was already very popular. So everybody came to hear him. And then all the birds of the universe were there. There were so many birds. And there are thousands. And they were speaking so loud. Tweeting so loud. He, nobody could hear anything. All the birds were celebrating Francis. And then Francis stands up. And he says, My dear sister birds, I am in the opinion that you have spoken enough. And now let me speak of the glories of God. And all the birds at once became quiet. Now there were thousands of people there and they all became Franciscan. This was the first Franciscan city. The entire population became Franciscan. And then Francis was forced to write Franciscan order for families. Because before they would retire. But then if all the city becomes beggars, who will they beg from? So he said, okay guys, if you live in a household, you have kids, this is how you become a Franciscan. But this is a similar miracle. Uh, his, you can say his chief disciple, St. Anthony, did with the frogs. Now, St. Anthony needed help, I don't remember exactly what. And he saw a peasant on a cart. And he says, can you help me with so-and-so? And the peasant says, no, my dear monk, respected monk, I'm, uh, my son just died and I have to take him to, to burial. I'm very sorry, but I'm, I'm in a hurry. And he goes on and he's uh, feeling very amused because his son is only sleeping. And he arrives and he comes to wake up his son and says, oh, this stupid monk came, you know what I told him? And he shakes the son and he shakes the son and he checks and the son is dead. Uh, just imagine what in, in that moment, like these uh, bloopers movie. Ha ah, ha ha, oh, oh dear. So he takes the cart and he realizes it was a saintly being and he returns and he falls at the feet of Anthony and asks for forgiveness for lying and Anthony resurrects the son. 
Anthony resurrected 12 people in, in the preaching. Some a mother would come with a dead son and he would stop preaching and look at the son and make the sign of the cross and the son risen. When his father was on court, so his father had this big uh, asset and it was door to door to the cathedral. And somebody killed someone in the cathedral and threw the body to his father's yard. So Anthony, minding his own business uh, in Italy, that this is in Lisbon, he gets the vision that this is what happened. Now Anthony is already the provincial, he's in charge of the entire area, uh, but he goes to one of the monks and he says, uh, can I leave for a few days? I have something very important to do. Can I leave from my duties? And like, of course you can leave, you're my boss. Please, yes, you have permission. So Anthony starts walking to Lisbon from Italy. He's gone for only two nights and one day. How does he arrive to Lisbon? He arrives to Lisbon. He goes to the court and people know him. Yeah, this, every, the whole Europe knows him, Saint Anthony. And they know because he's also the son of the of one of the noble men there. And he comes to the court and he says, really, it's my father, he's innocent. And the judge says, Anthony, with all due respect, we cannot release him. There was a body in his yard and we need to find out what happened. And he says, dig up the corpse, dig up the corpse. The, the body will tell you that he didn't kill him. So the whole court, they know he's a saint. All the court, the judge, and all the people, you know, there's the people that come to watch the trial. It was like the reality show of the time. All of them very happy. Something actually interesting happened in the court. They all go to the cemetery together. They dig up the corpse. Anthony makes the sign of the cross on the corpse. And he asks, did this man kill you? And the the resurrected corpse, the assassin, he puts his hand like an uh, oath and he says, no, this is not my killer. The judge asks Anthony, well, ask him who did it. And Anthony said, no, I'm not here to blame anyone. I'm here to acquit an innocent man. And then the person who was killed asks Anthony, look, I was excommunicated before I died. I did some terrible sins and I was excommunicated. Can you please forgive me? And Anthony forgives him, releases his soul, makes the sign of the cross, and the person dies. Again, his father is acquitted, and he quickly goes back to clean toilets or whatever he was doing in uh, Italy. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, Tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.